Hi everyone! Welcome to Agriculture in the Classroom. Today we are visiting a vegetable farm on the East Coast where you will learn how vegetables are grown in Newfoundland and Labrador. You will see how they are planted, harvested, and sold. And you will get to meet the farmer and some interesting people involved with this process. Let's get started. Well, my family's been farming here on Brookfield Road since the middle of the 1800s. Uh, personally, I've been here for probably the past 20 years, but I guess uh, when you grow up on a farm, right from the time you're able to walk, you're kind of helping out or getting in the way, one or the other. There is no typical day on a farm. One of the great things about farming is, is such a variety to it. Uh, you may be seeding, you may be harvesting, you may be maintaining uh, the crop, you may be doing tractor work, or you may be doing manual labor. Every day is different. There's such a variety. There's no, there's no boredom here on the farm. We grow all our traditional vegetables, your cabbage, your turnip, potato, and carrots. But we also grow a lot of vegetables that uh, you don't typically think of growing here in Newfoundland. Zucchinis, artichokes, sweet corn, uh, kale, collards, uh, a lot of things. Basically what we do here on this farm is we grow as many different varieties of vegetables as you possibly can in our climate. We start planting the greenhouse in uh, early March. Uh, many of the things that grow above ground, such as your cabbage and your lettuces and your broccoli, all that is started in the greenhouse. Uh, we'll usually get into the field or start working the fields uh, in early May, uh, weather depending of course, and at that point we'll start seeding a lot of direct seeding stuff, such as your carrots and your potatoes uh, at that time, and we'll also start to transplant the stuff that we started in March. Pretty well every different crop has a different planting process. Most of the stuff that grows above ground is leafy vegetables. We will start planting them in March and we'll continue planting in the greenhouse right up until the middle of July just so we have continual supply. Uh, about four or five weeks after we plant the seeds, they're ready for transplants into the field. And then we'll use the machine to plant, uh, plant the crops such as broccoli and cauliflower into the field. Harvest times vary with the different crops and what we do, we, we try to get our crops on as early as we possibly can and maintain a, a continual production for as long as we can and we'll continue harvesting them right up until early November. Broccoli and cauliflower is kind of a mid-season thing. Uh, we start them in the greenhouses and uh, in a good year we'll start harvesting them in uh, late June, early July. Uh, depending on the season, we should be harvesting peas by late July and we'll continue harvesting them right up until the end of September and they're all harvested by hand. Well, a lot of vegetables, there is no other choice but to harvest them by hand just because they're delicate nature. Uh, you look at stuff such as strawberries and peas and lettuces, they do have to be harvested by hand because you're looking for a couple of things. You look for the maturity of the crop, uh, you cannot damage it, so you have to be very gentle with it. And uh, our scale is another thing that limits our machines uh, because we only grow an acre of uh, spinach that has to be harvested by hand. If we only grow a couple of acres of peas and beans, that also has to be harvested by hand. It's just not big enough acreage to justify mechanized uh, harvesting. Well, when you're harvesting, there's uh, you know, it's up to the individual harvester. They have to make some decisions on their own. They have to decide the, the size, is it ready to harvest? So they'll decide that before they pull it up or the, before they cut it off from the roots. And when you pull up a turnip, you have to cut off the roots here and you also have to cut off the leaves. That can only be done by hand. Every single turnip is unique. So there's going to be a different method for every single turnip. Potatoes is one of the only crops that we have a, actually a machine harvester for it. Uh, most of our crops are harvested by hand, uh, however potatoes we have a machine that will lift them up to the ground and will give our, our crew an opportunity to grade them over before they're put into our harvest bins. Oh. 
So when the potatoes are being harvested, the machine will lift them up out of the ground. It'll sift the soil out through the chain, and then uh, there's a part of the machine that will actually take the leaves away from the potatoes. The potatoes and then, of course, the rocks uh, will be carried on up through to a grading table for our guys to pick out the, any of the bad potatoes or any, uh, rocks. And uh, after that, they'll be transferred along the belt and they'll go up into uh, a spot for the guys to either bag the potatoes off or they'll go into bins. Sustainable farming is very important to us. Our family's been farming here for over 170 years. So what we've been doing is obviously sustainable. However, as we go into the future, we have to be more concerned about this. A limited, very limited uh, farmland base here in Newfoundland. And we want to continue farming this for generations to come. We're concerned about a lot of things. Uh, the degradation of soil and erosion, that's a huge problem anywhere in the world. And we're taking steps to rectify that. Uh, we use a lot of green crops, which is crops you plant that will, first of all, uh, it'll prevent erosion. It, it, as rain comes down, the, the vegetation will prevent that. And another thing is going to sequester any excess nutrients. So it'll turn those excess nutrients, which would normally be leached into the soil and into the groundwater, they'll turn that into organic matter. Uh, we started this retail store back in 94. Uh, it wasn't this particular one, it was originally just a table on side road that my mother started with. Originally we were providing vegetables for the local supermarkets and for the wholesalers. So we wanted to have a source or a, an opportunity to sell our products directly from the field to the people that are consuming them. Our customers absolutely love this place. It's funny, when we first started up, people didn't really know where their food was coming from. And now we have customers coming in, and as crops are coming out, and wondering when our sweet corn is going to be on it. And they know so much about it now. They're, they're, uh, they're actually growing with us. We've had kids that used to come in here as, uh, as toddlers. Now they're coming back with their own families. And it's uh, become a huge tradition to come to Leicester's to get their vegetables. Farming is a very rewarding occupation. Uh, really, it's the most important job in the world. You're producing food that feeds people. And in regards to uh, personal satisfaction, it's amazing. Every day, it's a different day. Every year, you get a chance to try new technology, new seed varieties. It's, it, it's so interesting in that it, no two days are ever the same. Uh, every year it's a, you get a chance to rectify your mistakes of the previous year. There's new challenges every year with unique weather or different weather and it's, it's an amazing job. Farming is a very rewarding career choice for a lot of people. I, I think as the world goes forward, uh, food production is going to be very, very important and it's a career that you can make a difference. When you look back at the end of your career, you can feel very satisfied in that what you did in this world really made a difference. We have a lot of teenagers working here. Uh, they come back and uh, you know many of them are looking for careers into agriculture now just because the head start they got here. It wasn't farming is a funny thing that once you experience it, it's something that you can never ever forget about. You always will be passionate about it. You'll always enjoy it, whether it's a, a backyard garden or whether it's uh, your own 100 acre or 200 acre farm.